Guys, we have an ultimate OLED monitor on the table for us today. We're going to be reviewing the ASUS ROG Swift PG34WCDM. This is a WOLED 800R curved 1440p 34 inch ultra wide monitor running at 240 hertz. And this thing is an absolute beast. The external build quality of the monitor is quite nice. There is a USB port at the top and even built into the top of the stand is a place for a webcam or a microphone or whatever you would want to use, but that's pretty cool. But you also do have another USB hub at the bottom, one USB port there, and another one with the rest of the ports at the back, which the ports are quite good on this. Two HDMI 2.1 ports, so you can use the full 240 hertz and 1440p resolution on the HDMI 2.1 ports and then also a display port 1.4 with DSC so you can use the same resolution and not only that you also have a USB-C 90 watt power delivery port that also supports that 240 hertz refresh rate just depending on what laptop you decide to hook it up to I use my M3 Pro MacBook Pro and it worked just fine there is also a, an optical jack if you want to connect a sound bar here is a quick screenshot of everything included in the box so you know what to expect and quite honestly, you do get a ton of stuff in the box. And they also give you this nice little carrying case for your extra cables and uh, adapters that you may or may not use while setting up the monitor. But it's quite nice just to help you stay organized. They even give you like a calibration report and whatnot to let you know how good your specific monitor did leaving the factory. And I will tell you this, guys, when you plug this thing up, it will blow your mind. Just reviewed the Alienware 32 inch 4K 240 hertz display. And when I pulled it out of the box, because I'm so used to another Alienware monitor that I have. It was so similar in the use case other than refresh rate being faster and being in a slightly different form factor that I can't honestly say that I was blown away when I first plugged it in and started gaming on it. It just felt very familiar. But the Asus, this thing absolutely blew my mind. Like when I plugged it in, I was like, oh shoot, like this looks different. Like it was not the same feeling that I had before from looking at a W OLED panel from LG for the past year. And then also the QD OLED panel that I've been using for a little bit over a year as well from Samsung. Just taking a look at the peak brightness from the QD OLED Samsung at 233 nits compared to 286 nits on the ASUS is substantial to say the absolute least. And not to mention that since this one is the W OLED, you will get a little bit deeper black levels, especially during the daytime. But quite honestly, in use of the QD OLED, especially for a long period of time, during the day, you may catch some of those gray hues in the blacks, but it's not super often. But I at night honestly i never noticed the difference between the two and even though the asus does use an anti-glare matte coating which is quite good um, it does still show a little bit of reflections not as clearly as a qd oled for example with, with it being more reflective it's so bright that i honestly could not really tell the difference in use because of that drastically increased brightness over the Alienware. Alienware is glossy, of course, but the Asus having that matte display, but being significantly brighter overpowers the need for that different coating. There is also a KVM feature built into the monitor as well, and it does automatically switch depending on which input you are using. As far as the external build quality, the stand is super sturdy. It is pretty big, so you will have to keep that in mind, but it is built super sturdy, and there is an LED light at the bottom the stand and you do have height tilt and swivel functionality but no pivot of course for this huge 34 inch beast and there is a special vase mount adapter in the box that asus wants you to use if you are going to mount this monitor and it does work very well now one thing that i was unsure about this monitor in the pictures was the actual build quality of the monitor because after having the alienware that i felt was built very very well and an lg that was built not so well especially when you decide to move it around on a monitor arm on the LG the panel is super thin and you pretty much feel like you're gonna break it I did break one so with that being said I was really nervous looking at just the pictures of the Asus but getting it in person is actually very sturdy so you really don't have much to worry about and you can freely move it around as you need to once it's on a monitor arm or even if it's on the stand Initially, I was thinking that this monitor would be nice if it had a remote instead of using the joystick controls located at the bottom. But honestly, the joystick controls work pretty good. 
but there is also an app from Asus called Asus Display Widget that you can download on your PC and control literally all of the on-screen display functions with your keyboard and mouse, which is quite nice and not a lot of monitor manufacturers have this available. Talking about the motion blur performance of this monitor, we've looked at many OLED monitors in the past, and this is not really that much different. It's just running at a faster 240 hertz refresh rate instead of 165 or 175 hertz refresh rate like the previous generation of OLED monitors that we reviewed last year that were mostly QD OLED. But the PG34 does also have another trick up its sleeve because it does have the ELMB functionality where it does insert black frames to give you a little bit better motion clarity at 120. 20 hertz specifically because if you don't set your windows settings to 120 hertz you will not be able to enable the elmb set your pc to 120 hertz if you want to use that feature but honestly with the brightness hit that you take with the elmb slightly increased motion clarity which i would say is more of a trade-off by having a lower refresh rate i would just say don't use the elmb on this monitor and use the standard uh, 240 hertz is crystal clear. You really don't have much to complain about. Another brightness feature of this monitor as well is the fact that it does feature a uniform brightness setting, which will pretty much reduce the amount of times that some OLED monitors would, when you pull up a huge 100% or 80% white screen, it would do like a quick dimming. That pretty much doesn't happen nearly as often on this monitor. It keeps the brightness very uniform, even if you have large white pages on your screen so it's a lot less distracting and a lot more usable because the peak brightness is still pretty high when you're using the uniform brightness so i do find that that is definitely a win and i hope that more monitors in the future come out with a similar setting to this talking about the color performance of the monitor it does pretty well i will say some of the delta e's are pretty crazy but that is just something that i found on a lot of oled monitors they don't quite have the professional color ranges completely dialed in to use let's say for reference if you are doing very color sensitive creative work but in terms of just an entertainment and enjoyment aspect of these monitors absolutely fantastic like when you pull this thing out of the box again it is pretty stunning but you can calibrate this monitor to get a little bit better results but pretty much i use the scenery mode set the gamma to 2.2 and change the white point from 6500 to 7500 and that seemed to give me a much better result without calibrating and then of course calibrate it is going to look even better but i wouldn't bother calibrating it if you aren't doing professional work because spending a couple hundred bucks on a calibrator and then figuring out how to use it and then you know setting up that calibration reminder to redo it every few months to make sure that you're getting the same work again if you're not doing it for professional work probably not worth it you'll be just fine it looks fantastic another good thing about the pg34 is that it does come with a two-year warranty with quick replacement from asus so you don't really have to worry about anything as far as dead pixels or uh, image burn-in or anything like that they are standing behind their product which is quite good and i have even seen them boost some of their other oled monitors to a three-year warranty i really don't have much else to say about this thing i, I don't have anything bad to say about it like i mean could i I wish that it was a little faster you know 360 hertz maybe i mean that would be cool but i don't really know if i need that i am looking forward to trying out a 27 inch 480 hertz monitor coming from asus but again that's going to be a more competitive fo focus monitor where this one is an ultra wide that is very fast and still competitive but also gives you that luxury feel of being more immersed in your games and i think that 34 inch ultra wide is my personal favorite monitor size to game on just because of that little bit of extra advantage that you do get in the games that support it which is a lot of them these days but if you're playing like csgo valorant then obviously a standard 27 inch is probably going to do you a little bit better maybe even a 32 inch if you want a panel that tall otherwise um, i'll have this thing linked in the description below it's very impressive i highly recommend picking up this bad boy if you are in the market for a new monitor for $1,300. But even the price for all the features that you get, like even the um, optical output, I have not tried another monitor that wasn't a TV that um, in the past few years had an optical output. So even that is a huge value add because I have one of those sticking out of the back of my small form factor PC. Truthfully, Asus pretty much thought of everything on this bad boy.